In this video, I'm going to share with you a Google graphing tool that is going to be very useful to make graphs in economics. And mostly we're going to review some graphing terminology, things like equations of lines and slopes. So there are two versions of this Google graphing tool that are linked here using tiny URL. One is graph grid. It has a numeric grid so that you can easily graph particular points and graph minus grid does not have a grid. I'm going to use graph grid in this one. The links to these will be in the description of the video. So when you click the link, it's going to ask if you want to make a copy. So you're not going to be able to edit the original version. You're going to want to make a copy that you save in your Google account. Now, when you click, it might ask you to log into your Google account. It'll ask you if you don't have a Google account, you can create one. Let's just make a copy here and it'll take a couple of seconds usually to make a copy in your own account. So again, this version has a little numeric grid with some vertical and horizontal guidelines here, making it easy for us to read off points. Now just some quick review of terminology for graphing. This is the horizontal axis or the X axis down here along the bottom. This is the vertical or what we'll call the Y axis going up and down along the left side here. Now, often when we make graphs, we'll want to think about independent variables and dependent variables. Usually we think about the independent variable being something that causes something else. So the dependent variable depends on the value of the independent variable. So to give us an example to talk about, let's think about perhaps a concert coming up later. And perhaps on the Y axis, the vertical axis, we want to put the price of the tickets to this concert. And then on the X axis, we'll put attendance. How many people end up buying tickets and going to this concert? Now, which of these would be the independent variable, or sometimes we'll call it the explanatory variable, and which of these would be the dependent variable? Does the price they charge depend on how many people go, or does how many people go depend on the price? Right, since the price being higher will cause fewer people to want to go, we would probably say the price is the independent variable, attendance is the dependent variable. Now in some science classes, you'll be taught that a good rule of thumb, and this is indeed a good rule of thumb, is that you should normally think about putting the independent variable on the x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis. We're doing the opposite here. Back in the 1800s, there was an economist named Alfred Marshall, and when he made graphs describing the relationship between price and quantity, he put price, the independent variable, on the y-axis, and we just still do it that way today. Now, what if we were to grab one of these blue lines over here to discuss the relationship between price and attendance? Which of these lines over here on the top left would we probably think would choose to do this? Well, let's, let's just check some of them out here. What about this, a horizontal line? Do we think that's the right kind of line to describe this relationship? What this would seem to describe is the price is going to be $13 no matter what. Let me zoom in here. So the price is going to be $13 and any number of people might attend. That might not make sense for our purposes. So let's try something else. What about this vertical line? Let's see. Let's just plop it down, say somewhere like this, going straight up and down. What this would suggest is no matter what price we choose, let me move this label down a little bit here. No matter what price we choose, six or maybe this is 6,000 people are going to attend the concert. That might not make sense either. Okay, let's try again. What about this line? has a positive slope, and we would call this a direct relationship. A direct relationship means that as one of these variables goes up, the other also tends to go up. So this would say that as we raise the price, more people will want to attend this concert. Raise the price, more people want to attend the concert. Do you think we should have a direct relationship here between price and attendance? 
Probably not. Okay, so let's check out the last option here and see if this makes a little bit more sense. So this is what we'd call a negatively sloped line and an inverse relationship. Here, as we charge a higher price, fewer people want to attend. If we charge a lower price, more people want to attend. In this case, we would probably expect an inverse relationship between price and attendance. All right, since we've mentioned the idea of direct and inverse relationships and mentioned the idea of positive and negative slope, let's look a little bit more closely at the idea of slope and the equation of a line. Let me redraw this a little bit. I'm going to put the y-intercept right here at the number 14. And I'm going to put the x-intercept down here at the number 7. So suppose this is the relationship that we observed for a particular concert that at a price of, say, $14 per ticket, I know that's pretty inexpensive, but at a price of $14 per ticket, how many people would be going to the concert if this really were our relationship that we observed? Now, zooming in a little bit here, it looks like at $14 it would be zero people attending this concert. Sometimes in economics we'll call that a choke price, but we could just think about it as the y-intercept. So what does this y-intercept 14 tell us? Well, it tells us how high the price needs to be when the value of the x variable here, attendance, is going to be zero. So the y-intercept of this line is 14. All right, what about the slope? What do you know about slope? Well, slope is rise over run. It's a rate of change. And so in this case, what we would think about is rise is up and down. Run is moving left and right. And so here, every time we go over one or run one, we're going to go down two. So that's run one down two. Down two would be like minus two, right? So here we'd have rise over run equals minus 2 is the rise between any two points and then over 1. Down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. So that slope is just going to be minus 2. Which brings us to the equation of a line, right? Everybody is vaguely familiar with the idea of y equals mx plus b. And let's just go through to make sure we know what all the parts here mean. Y means the value on the y-axis. X means the value on the horizontal axis. And so here we could write Y is actually price. So P equals X is attendance. So we could call that A. And M, what's that stand for? Right, m is the slope. So we could just plug in that minus 2 there, right? It's really just equal to minus 2 if we want to simplify that. So p would be equal to minus 2 times the attendance, a, and then plus b. What's that plus b? Oh, the y-intercept, right, so plus 14. Right, so now we have an equation of a line, and certainly we could leave this P as Y if we were more comfortable with that, and we could leave the A as X if we were more comfortable with that. But in economics, since we are using applied mathematics, a lot of times it is going to make us more comfortable, make it easier to understand if we plug in the actual variables that we're talking about. Now, a very common thing, again, that economists tend to do a little bit differently from others, it doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong, but quite often you'll see an economist write this equation of a line just putting the y-intercept first and then the minus 2a second. So a common thing you might see is p equals 14 minus 2a. And then we know from just reading this off is that the 14 is the y-intercept and then the minus 2 is the slope.
Another very important thing that you're going to see in economics quite often is to think about what that slope means. To be able to, in words, and logically explain minus 2 tells us what. The 14, we already said, the y-intercept tells us, in this case, at what price will there be no customers. The minus 2 tells us that each time we want say one more person to come, or 1,000 more people to come, then we need to cut our price by $2. So anytime we want the x value to increase by one unit, we need to lower the value of y by two units, right? So over one, down two. So this is a way you can always explain what the slope means for every one change in the x variable, for every one change in attendance, there will be a 2 decrease, because it's a minus 2, a 2 decrease in the y variable. The last thing I want to go through quickly in this video is, what if you don't have a straight line? Sometimes we're going to be looking at curves in this course, and we'll want you to think about slopes in that case as well. So let's move this out of the way, and let's bring in a curve. So what if we had a curve that looked something like this red one here. Something like that. What can we say about the slope of this red curve? Well, unlike this blue line, it doesn't have one slope that's always the same, right? That's one of the defining characteristics of a line, is that the slope is always constant along a line. With a curve, the defining characteristic is the slope is not constant everywhere. We see up here on the top that the slope is very flat. We see down here at the bottom the slope is very steep. So up here it might be minus one-tenth. Down here it might be ten, minus ten. And then somewhere along this curve, look this is our blue line that had a slope of two and still has a slope of two, right? We could take this blue line and we could stick it over here, tangent. Tangent just means it touches this red curve at one point. And we could find out where on this red curve is there a slope of minus 2. And it looks like it would be a point somewhere around here. Yeah, so with a curve like this that starts off with a very low slope, and down here it's a very steep slope, this would be about minus a tenth, minus 10, and somewhere around here, minus 2. Suppose that this red curve described how many people wanted to go to this concert. Well, this would say that at $14, no one wants to go to the concert. But as we cut the price just a little bit, we're going to have a lot of people wanting to go to this concert at between $13 and $14. So by cutting our price to $13.75 or $13.50, we're going to get a lot of additional people interested in, the, in this concert. But as we cut the price more and more and more, the additional customers that we get are going to get lower and lower and lower. Here at the end, we'd be cutting our price from $6 per ticket to giving tickets away for free and we would only be increasing the number of people in attendance by one more, or one more thousand, if this was attendance in thousands on the x-axis. So being able to think about the difference in slope and how that difference in slope is going to change what our best decision might be in different circumstances is going to be an integral part of this class. So I encourage you to actively take time to play around with graphs, graphing straight lines, graphing curves, and being very conscientious about thinking about what the slope tells you in various situations. You're going to be running into that concept quite a bit in any economics class. A lot of graphs, a lot of interpreting slopes. And so the more you can practice at the beginning, the easier it will be. So if you'd like to try this graphing tool for yourself, again, just check the links in the video description. 
Let me show you another couple of very quick things you can do. So you could like drag the labels over here, just left click with the mouse, left click in the label and backspace and you can type any kind of information that you want. If you see that it's wrapping like this, then you can drag a corner and make it a little wider if you want. And then if you wanted to use this in a report or for an assignment, then you can go over here and you can download an image of everything you have here. So everything in this little light checkered frame here is going to be included. So if you don't want these to be included, just drag them out of the way. If you want to type an explanation for something, then just click down here and you can type whatever you want. And then go up here to File, Download. And you can download it either as a PDF, JPEG, or a PNG, or an SVG. JPG gives you decent quality and a pretty small file size. And you can just tell it that you'd like to save it, give it a name, and then there's what you'll end up with. So good luck with your economics graphing. Anytime you see a graph in the textbook, make sure to take a minute, draw it yourself, Make sure you can explain everything that's going on and you'll be good to go during your economics courses.